Okay, so we're inching closer to being able to solve polynomial equations and sketch polynomial graphs. Um, we're going to here in this video look at factor, the factorization of polynomials. So this is about bringing together the tools we learned about in the last two videos. So we're going to need the factor theorem from the previous video and our process of long division from two videos ago. Um, okay, so to factorize a polynomial of degree three or higher, the first step, and this is regardless of the degree of polynomial, the first step in any factorization is to look for common factors. If there are common factors, take those out first, then see what you're dealing with. Step two, if necessary, we'll need to identify one linear factor using the factor, I'm oh, sorry, the factor or rational root theorems. So for now, we don't know about the rational root theorem. We'll look at that in a couple of videos time. And realistically, um, at this level, we're not really going to be using the rational root theorem. It's just a quite comp a more complicated version of the same thing. Um, so essentially it is using the factor theorem to identify one factor. And that's a sort of trial and error process, but it's not unlimited trial and error. There are only a select number of things we'll need to trial. Then we're going to divide the polynomial by the factor. Once we've found one factor, we're going to divide it to find the other factors. Um, and then if we've got any non-linear um, factors remaining, so if we've got a linear times a quadratic, we're going to factorize that quadratic. Um, okay, so let's work through some examples. We want to fully factorize 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 30x. So the first thing I identify here is I'm not going to jump to a more complicated process than necessary. I actually don't need the factor theorem here. I actually don't need long division here because if I do the first step first, it'll make my life much easier, which is to look for common factors. So if we have 3x cubed minus 9x squared minus 30x, there's a common factor of 3, but also a common factor of x. So when we take 3x out of that, we have x squared minus 3x minus 10. And so actually, we've, we don't need any special polynomial techniques. Just taking out a common factor then leaves us with a nice simple quadratic that we can factorise as x minus 5 times x plus 2. And we're done. So fully factorise, everything needs to be as factorised as possible. So no more common factors in this bracket, no more common factors in this bracket. We've got 3 times x times x minus 5 times x plus 2. We've written the, the cubic as a series of factors, each of which are as simple as they possibly can be. All right, example two, fully factorise 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 7x minus 6. Okay, there's no common factors. Okay, so no common factors between 2, 9, 7 and 6. There's not a common factor of x, so nothing I can do at step 1. Step 2 is to identify a factor using the factor theorem. Okay, so essentially this is a trial and error process where we're trying, we're going to substitute numbers into the polynomial. So we might try p of 2, for example, and if that were to give us 0, that would mean that x minus 2 is a factor, for example. So that's what we want to do. But it's not completely random trial and error. Because I want you to think about this cubic, okay? This cubic, when it is fully factorised, it's a cubic, so it's going to have three brackets. It starts with 2x cubed, so it's going to have to be 2x in one bracket and then x and x in the others to give us 2x cubed. And it finishes with minus 6. So these three numbers here are going to have to multiply together to give negative 6. Okay, so therefore, I'm not going to try plus 5 because it doesn't go into negative 6. So they have to be factors of negative 6. So it's going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. That's it. Okay, the other thing to bear in mind is 2 or 3 of those, in this case, would be 2 realistically because it's these two linear brackets. 2 of those will give us 0. So we've got 2 out of, we've got 6 things to trial and 2 of them will give us what we want. So we've got a one-third chance of getting it right. At worst, we're just going to have to try, you know, four things until we get something right, pretty much. Sorry, that's not true. We're going to have to try uh, five things until we get something right at absolute worst. But you should, every time you trial something, you learn something. I always start with one. I always do P of 1 first. It gives me a point of reference. Do I think the number needs to be negative? Do I think it needs to be a lot bigger? Where do I go from there? So I would always start with 1. Subbing 1 into this polynomial is going to give me 2 plus 9 plus 7 minus 6. There's too many positives I'm seeing there. 9 and 7 are both quite big. Um, so 
2 plus 9 plus 7 are not counteracted by 6. We definitely don't get 0. It doesn't really matter what we get. If it's not 0, it's not useless, useful to us. So given that I had too many positives, I'm hoping that P of negative 1, if I make X negative 1, might be better. 2 times negative 1 cubed to make that negative 2. Negative 1 into the X squared will be positive 1, so it'll still be plus 9. And then we're going to have minus 7, and then we're going to have minus 6. Okay, so the negative 2 and negative 7 counteract the negative 9, but we get negative 6, so that's not 0. Okay, so that's not working for us either. I think, though, I should stick on the negatives so that I get um, I get some... Oh, although I get three negative terms then. Maybe we'll see how we go. Let's go with P of 2, see what happens. 2 times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times that is 16. Um, 2 squared is 4 times 9 is 36. Uh, plus 14 and minus 6. Okay, so that's definitely not counteracting the negative 6. So I was on the right track thinking about the negatives. So that's going to make it negative 16. It'll still be positive 36. will be negative 14 and minus 6. And that's better. Negative 16 minus 14 is negative 30. Minus 6 is negative 36, which balances out positive 36 to give 0. Okay, so if P of negative 2 equals 0, that means that X plus 2 is a factor. So we found our first factor. We only need to find one, we'll do long division to get the others. So we're now going to divide x plus 2 into our polynomial, which is 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 7x minus 6, um, to find the other factors. So what do we multiply x by to get 2x cubed? That's 2x squared. Multiplying 2x squared by x plus 2 is 2x cubed plus 4x squared and then subtracting leaves us with 5x squared. If this is going too fast for you, go back and watch the video on long division. What do I need to multiply x by to get to 5x squared? That'll be 5x. 5x times x plus 2 is 5x squared plus 10x, and subtracting 7x minus 10x is minus 3x. Bring down our final term. What do we need to multiply x by to get negative 3x? That'll be negative 3. Multiplying negative 3 by x plus 2 is negative 3x minus 6, which confirms the zero remainder. Okay, so now we know our original function was 2x, sorry, original polynomial 2x cubed plus 9x squared plus 7x minus 6. We now know that that's the same as x plus 2 times 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Now we want to fully factorise, so if this can be factorised further, we want to do that. So um, if your factorization is quite good, you can go ahead with whatever method you prefer to be safe. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I'm looking for factors of negative 6 that add up to positive 5, which is going to be positive 6 and negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite 5x as plus 6x and minus x. And then we use factorization by grouping to factorize. Okay, so we've got 2x is a common factor, leaves us with x plus 3. In the, sec the last two terms, um, negative 1 is a common factor, leaves us with x plus 3. Okay, so we have x plus 2 times x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. Okay, so we could have got there in a couple of different ways. We identified this as the factor and then divided that. If we may have stumbled across p of negative 3 equals 0 first and instead of divided by x plus 3, we wouldn't have stumbled across this factor by using the factor theorem because that would have required us to have tested fractions and we wouldn't do that. Um, that's, that's actually what we're doing in the rational root theorem. But given that there are two linear factors here, um, we're going to come across a factor without needing to head into fractional territory. Um, but there were two possibilities that we could have found for our first factor and then long division to find the remaining factors. Okay, let's do another example. So example three, express x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12 as a product of linear factors. So we want to express it as a product, oops, sorry, product, so things multiplying together of linear factors. So it's just saying factorize. It's important that we can work flexibly with the different language that might be used. Um, so we want to factorize this. So I need to find a factor. I know that I'm only going to trial numbers that divide into 12. So plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6. So plenty of options that might work. Um, only and three of those are going to work. So let's just start with one and then go from there. P 
of 1 is 1 minus 1 minus 8 plus 12. Uh, so that's, that's 4, so it's not 0. What about if we did negative 1? We would get negative 1, still minus 8. Sorry, I missed the second term. Uh, still minus 1, and then plus 8, sorry, and then plus 12. Okay, so definitely not enough negative to cancel out the positive. So I think it needs to be something positive. So P of 2 is 8 minus 4 minus 16 plus 12. 8 plus 12 is 20. Negative 4 minus 16 is also 20. And so that does equal 0. Okay, so this means that X minus 2 is a factor. So we've found one factor and we can do long division to find the others. So let's divide x minus 2 into x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12. Um, okay, so what do we multiply x by to get x cubed? That's x squared. x squared times x minus 2 is x cubed minus 2x squared. Subtracting negative x squared minus minus 2x squared is negative x squared plus 2x squared. So that's just x squared. And then we bring down our next term. What do we have to multiply x by to get x squared? That will be x. x times x minus 2 is x squared minus 2x. And subtracting negative 8 minus minus 2 is negative 8 plus 2, which is negative 6. And then we bring down our final term. What do we have to multiply x by to get negative 6x? That's negative 6. And multiplying negative 6 by x minus 2, negative 6x plus 12. And so that does indeed confirm that it's a factor. And we have now found um, the quadratic factor that goes with that. So we know that x cubed minus x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to x minus 2 times x squared plus x minus 6. And that's a simple quadratic that can be factorised. Factors of negative 6 that add up to positive 1. It's x plus 3 and x minus 2. So interestingly here, we've got this repeated factor. So we wouldn't actually write that like that. Um, we wouldn't write it as x minus 2 times x minus 2. We would write that as x minus 2 squared times x plus 3. So it's still a product of linear factors, okay? Because this isn't x squared minus 2, which would be a quadratic factor. This is a linear factor, x minus 2 squared, which is a product, okay? It's multiplied by itself. Um, so we would write it in that way. Okay, and then example four, the final one, let's fully factorise this. So factor theorem, uh, no common factors. So factor theorem to find a factor, let's start with one. So we get one minus two minus two minus three, too many negatives. I think negative one could work. Negative one will still be minus two, that'll be plus two minus three. Um, so that doesn't work either. Let's try negative two. Quite often one or negative one will be a factor. It's just a product of accident of these four examples I've chosen. Um, so this would be negative eight. Uh, four times two would be negative eight. And then that'd be plus four or minus three. Oh, definitely not negative, too many negatives. Let's change that to positive two. Sorry, I didn't need to rub it out. Um, sorry, I should have learned that the negatives gave me three negative terms although we get three negative terms with a positive, but the you don't want, if you've, um, if we had a negative value, the only term that turns out to be positive is that one. Whereas if we put in a positive number, the only term that turns out to be positive is that one. And that's going to be much bigger if you're cubing something to, be, to then balance out these smaller ones. So I think it's going to need to be a bigger positive number. So eight um, minus eight and then minus four and then, minus 3, so that's negative 7, so that's not a factor. Okay, so not 0, not 0, not 0. Ah, it was stupid of me to try 2. Sorry, after I told you it's not unlimited, I didn't think about this step. So it has to be a factor of 3, so it was definitely never going to be positive or negative 2. It's going to be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 3. So let's try P of 3. So 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9 times negative 2 is minus 18. That's going to be minus 6 and minus 3. Negative 18 minus 6 is negative 24. Minus 3 again is negative 27. So that balances out the positive 27. Okay, so x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, so let's divide x minus 3 
into our polynomial x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, fa uh, what do we multiply x by to get x cubed? x squared. Uh, multiplying x squared by x minus 3 gives us x cubed minus 3x squared. Subtracting negative 2x squared minus minus 3x squared is x squared. And bring down our next term. What do we multiply x by to get x squared? It's x. x times x minus 3 is x squared minus 3x. Subtracting negative 2 minus minus 3 is negative 2 plus 3. So that's x. And then we bring down our next term. What do we multiply x by to get x minus, uh, sorry, to get x? It's just going to be 1. And so we do indeed confirm the remainder of 0. Okay, so x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to x minus 3 times x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so the question is fully factorised. So if we can factorise this quadratic further, we will. Factors of 1 that add up to 1, they don't exist. We can't fully factorise without going into third territory. Uh, sorry, we can't factorise further without going into third territory. And so this would be considered fully factorised. That quadratic doesn't factorise any further. Um, just a quick note, we'll talk about this in the next video. If, the question, if we were solving this equation, so this equals 0, this equals 0, then we know that x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3, and that equals 0, which can't be factorised further, but we, we can solve, okay, we can't factorise it, but we can solve something that can't be factorised. We can use quadratic formula, da, 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 negative 1 plus or minus square root of, etc. So we'll get to that in the next video, the solving step. But in terms of fully factorised, uh, factorised meaning write it as things multiplying together, um, this is as fully factorised as we can get it. We can't reduce this any further. It's got no, no whole number factors. Okay, so some practice of factorisation in exercise 6C.